there is nothing more upsetting than realizing that today is not the 3rd of March, but the 2nd of March. Which means I... Which means Chain of Gold will not be in my hands today. And that's how my Monday is so far. One day, hopefully soon, I won't be starting my vlogs in the car. But you already saw me in the car yesterday, so hey you guys, it's Teresa and welcome back to my channel. Today's vlog, as y'all can tell, is my Chain of Gold vlog. Um, I'm currently in my car. It is now Tuesday, so it is release day. Happy book birthday. I'm waiting to pick up my brother. I don't have the, the book in my hand. I do know that it is and has been shipped to my house and delivered. It is chilling somewhere there, waiting for me to be opened. I'm hoping that I can finish this book in like the span of four days, which shouldn't be too bad because I finished Queen of Air and Darkness in like three-ish days. Cause I have to leave, um, well actually for, I have to leave for a business thing in a couple of days. I'm flying out Saturday. I don't want to carry too much. Um, thankfully I already got the ebook for Priory of the Orange Tree and I got two arcs, my first two arcs ever. One of them is coming out this March. So I have to read it this week. Yeah, it comes out the 24th, so I have to read it this week and get the review up and all that stuff, and then the next one doesn't come out until June. But the f June release one was one that I was actually, that was my very first arc. The second one was my second one, so I have some time with the June one. The March one, not so much. The, the um, publisher had in the NetGalley email was like, we like to have our reviews up, I think, two weeks before the release date, and it comes out the 24th of March, and it is now this third so i need to do that and read that very soon but yay i got my first arc very exciting i have chain of gold and as for my sarah j mass fans who know that i am a sarah j mass fan as well i probably will be reading um crescent city in april i want to do it this month but i have too many read-alongs going on i have six of crows i have chain of gold coming out i have the dragori series i have orange the priority tree so i have to I have to figure out where I need to fit these things. Plus me going away for a week also isn't conducive to my reading schedule, but we can work with that as we will. I will get back to you guys once the book is in my hand and I am unboxing. Until then, I'm gonna chill because I decided to travel with you know, the brick book that I have and read that. Also, can we talk about how good this lighting is for me right now? Like I look freaking amazing. But I feel like I said that yesterday too or in my February wrap-up because I was wearing my glasses and for once I don't feel weird wearing glasses out in public so I actually look kind of cute unfortunately you won't see this version in um, any of my filmed videos outside of vlogs because apparently my glasses pick up the glare from my ring light and I don't know how to and I tried like multiple angles to fix it and it wasn't working so yeah but I will catch up with you guys in a little bit alrighty so I just got home and my box is here and I really need to use the bathroom but I chose to unbox. My address is on here, right? And I chose to unbox this before I do anything. Because my body is not nearly as important as Chain of Gold is. So, do this. Okay, don't hurt the book. Okay. Come on. Oh, she, oh, okay, she's not, she's smaller than Queen of Air and Darkness, I believe. Yeah, she's definitely smaller. Um, this is absolutely, <gasps> the end pages, the end pages. Ooh, I wonder what's back here. We got the bonus story in the back. Oh, this is amazing. Why does she look like naked? Because this is. This is this, and then here are the end pages, or at least this beginning end pages. I have no, there are brown kitties. Oh, this makes me so happy. Okay, so when she's naked, she's just kind of a plain black book, which is fine by me, but look at this. Oh, this makes me so happy. I'm going to read this right now after I use the bathroom. But I'm going to read this right now. I'm so excited.
so I just started reading, but like listen to the slide because I <sighs> I love my children, my children's children. Yeah. Thomas was annoyingly perceptive. It was very quick, James said, with some reluctance. Many things that are very quick are also very bad, said Matthew, setting the point of his stele to James's skin. Guillotines come down very quickly, for instance. When Christopher's experiments explode, they often explode very quickly. Clearly, I have neither exploded nor been guillotined, said James. I went into the shadow realm. I just... <laughs> I love them all already and I'm only 18 pages in. <laughs> Tears will be shed. Alright, so it's about like 10.15ish, I'm gonna say. Yeah, 10.15. I'm 94 pages in. I'm gonna call it a night. I wanna read more, but I also don't wanna cry anymore and it's just so good. The, the Right now, the only downside is that I, the chapters are so long and... Well, it, like Cassie Claire's a pretty fast paced like writer and it goes through pretty quickly. It's still just like chapter four lasts from like page 94 to like page 122. So it's just, it's a lot, which is why I'm stopping there. Cause I want to write until like 11 tonight. Um, so far I'm really enjoying it. I'm loving kind of like the crackhead energy that like Matthew and James have. It's very, it's very cute and precious. I love it. I love that. We have a love triangle because Cassie is like the queen of love triangles because she can write them very, very well. I don't know how this one's going to turn out, but I, well, actually, I have my I have my inklings on how it's going to turn out. So in terms of being able to call back to like nostalgia and like write next generation stories, I think that I prefer this one to Queen of Air and Darkness. I feel like Queen of Air and Darkness was a little too heavy on the nostalgia. And it took up a lot of page time, whereas with um, Chain of Gold, it's like a nice mix of like nostalgia. And then we get the new characters and we get to see them develop and grow. So I'm enjoying it so far. And like, I was really concerned that Will was dead in the beginning of the book, which made no sense. Because in the, in the epilogue of um, Clockwork Angel, it said that he had like died at like 80 or something, kind of by like his loved ones. But he just wasn't mentioned every time that Tessa came up. It was like, Tessa was walking around and I'm like, where's Will? Where is Will? He is not dead yet. He can't be dead yet. Where is he? And then we met him. And now I'm okay. <laughs> now I can go back to living vicariously through Tessa with Will's dad. I, I really thought I was going to just have to pretend to be a mom for Tessa. But <laughs> I love it so much. I just, I don't know. I really want to see Cassie Clare do something in like new adult or like adult and not so much YA just because her writing gets better every single time that she like releases a book or a short story or whatever. It's just really good. So I w I'd like to see her venture into like new adult or adult territory because I think that she'd just be a master at that. I think she's already almost there to new adult, honestly. So yeah, I'm just, it's so good and i'm not i'm only 94 pages in um i will read more tomorrow i have lunch and then i'll probably be reading after work after i cc my video because i did not get a chance to cc that tonight and i my eyes have been annoyingly dry recently so it's just been um kind of hard to focus on a screen for too long especially when you're editing a video and then like all that stuff so yeah i will catch up with you guys tomorrow when i read more of the book thankfully she's not big i don't know why someone said that the book was like really thick i'm like this is this is really light in comparison to queen of air and darkness you guys come on i know we don't really exercise as readers but we have lifted heavier books than this and i made a group chat with my friends lisa and andre and andre and i ended up spamming the, spamming the group chat because lisa i think is asleep or reading the book whichever one we figure we find out in the morning so yeah catch up with you guys in the tomorrow It is now the 4th, which is Wednesday, and this afternoon has been really, 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 really kind of over the place. So I thought, I didn't think I was picking up my brother today. So I went to Target, and I was going to go straight from Target to Walmart to get celery for beef broccoli, for, for um, beef barley soup. And then I get a text from my brother saying, hey, where are you? And I was like, I'm not the one picking you up. So after a few phone calls, I had to go from Target to my brother's school. Then from his school to my house, then to Walmart to get celery for the soup. 
and then back home and now i'm back home i forgot what page i'm on i think i'm on page 196 in the book and things are really they're really heating up i'm very concerned because we now have demons that have de that are demons but the erotzes don't help the wounds heal and i'm very intrigued by this the merry thieves are such a crackhead quartet like genuinely james wanted to go in the shadow realm which he has this ability to shift between it between our realm and the shadow realm but i'm so oily because it's so hot oh, it's upsetting okay he has the ability to go from the shadow realm to our realm but he doesn't like control it very well so they were like he has to try to upset him so it was thomas who was like james come here and then punched him in the solar plexus and then there was christopher who was like i'll just scare him and shoots a bow at his head using a crossbow and it's just like a mess of things and then i got even more of a mess of things because matthew was they're trying to usher everyone out so they don't get in trouble because will's at the door and he's like what are you guys doing and then Matthew's like, I'm really sorry to say this, but you're cursed. And then James disappears into the shadow realm. And I'm sitting here like, Matthew, don't do this to your parabatai. Please, please, with the love of everything kind, don't do this to your parabatai. So that is where I am at right now. Also, I've been talking about it with Andrea and Lisa, who I will link their lovely channels down below. If you don't follow them, follow them. We were talking about it and we're like, Grace is giving us kind of Annabelle Blackthorn vibes which would make a lot of sense if that's the case. I also, I just don't trust her. Something about her just doesn't sit right with me. I low-key also feel like the bracelet that she gives James ha has to do something with him being able to go from the shadow realm. Because I feel like Lucy would have gotten some like an ability of her own or something, but it doesn't seem like the case. So I'm just like, I need to know because I don't trust Grace. Grace is a shady bitch. But I will read more tonight. I have a couple things to do, like put laundry away start making my packing list i have to finish a chapter make dinner and then read and help edit my friend's um short story so i'll be doing all of those and i think uh what i will do is that i will get things done in intervals and read a little bit of chain of gold to get me through it wish me luck i will update you guys if i get any reading done tonight i doubt i'll have any con i'll try to look so give you guys some vlogging content tonight because i feel like it's a pretty busy night so it'd be perfect but if i don't i will update you guys so until then all right, so it is now Thursday. I know I said I was gonna have you guys follow me when I was vlogging, but I was just so busy with between like trying to cook dinner and then trying to read my friend's um, short story and then trying to retrain a goal. It's just a mess and I still haven't finished my entire to-do list. However, I am about 50% of the way through, I think 48%, which is exactly where I wanted to be by yesterday. I'm planning on reading another 25 tonight and then finish out the book tomorrow because I have to be on a plane super early Friday, Saturday saturday so far i'm really enjoying it it's a pretty quick paced read and i think it's a nice change from all the books that i have read that haven't been so quick paced in terms of the book itself i don't trust i think i've mentioned this before but i do not trust grace grace is kind of shady J jesse is getting a little shady as well but we're not going to get into that I, I i my theory right now is that grace and tatiana are working together to get jesse to possess james yeah oh no no james is not being shady jesse's being shady yeah yeah too many j names because jesse is stuck in this weird in between because he's like dead but not dead and then james can switch between worlds because he is because of his grandfather i'm assuming is the case so there's that i really like thomas and alistair together i think they're super cute and i'm ready for this angst I met Anna Lightwood, or I got to know more of Anna Lightwood, and can I just say, she can step on me, she can break my heart 10 ways to Sunday, and I would thank her and probably still love her, and I'm completely okay with that. Um, I love the fact that I believe Cassie said she was gender queer. I have to double check on that, so I will throw that up on the screen if I'm incorrect. So it's really nice to see like an out character in Edwardian London. Then I know that we have a bunch more of gay characters that people have complained about because apparently there's too many gay people in an Edwardian London historical fiction. Even though gay people have always existed and people were just forced back in the closet. But so y'all who have been saying that, I'm gonna call you out right now, you being homophobic. Telling me that like diverse things have been shoehorned in is just another way to, for people to be homophobic and racist and yeah, so if you are saying those things to Cassie or to anyone else, you are not an actual ally. So for lack of better words, 
go fuck off. We just reached a major death in the book. Barbara, one of Sophie and Gideon's um, children, have died. She died from her wounds because of the demons. So this is gonna, I think, I've officially reached kind of the, not the climactic point, but the point in the book where things are gonna start picking up a bit more. Is Matthew gay? I feel like Matthew's gay. This is the only thing that makes sense to me. I feel like he's like hiddenly in love with James and so he drinks. But right. I could be wrong. It could be someone else that he's in love with. I haven't finished looking at all of that just quite yet to give you guys a proper theory. What's up with the bracelet? I feel like the bracelet has to do something with the fact that she, they're trying to possess James. I or it's a charm that got James to fall in love with Grace. I don't. It just doesn't seem right that um, Grace, it, that James all of a sudden is in love with her, even though like I can see them being in love with each other, but also at the same time I can't see it because there's no chemistry. I also ship Cordelia and James. I think that they're super cute. And I like the fact that James is like, no, she's my friend. And then Cordelia brings up like marriage or something. And he like pales and is like, I don't like that. Don't like it. That's all the updates I have for you right now. I think that the book is going pretty well. I, I really think that Cassie has a knack for historical fiction. She really does. And I think that she should write more of it. But given her writing style, I kind of want to see her do like start to veer away from YA and maybe start to popular popularize more NA. Or start going into more adult because I think that her writing would fit really well for at least new adult and not so much adult but like in terms of the length of her books I think adult is the way to go for her to go but her writing style I feel like is fitting more new adult as well as the fact that her characters are a little older than young adult so yeah but I will catch up with you guys later I need to go to work and then I had to go shopping for my trip so I will try to take you along for that it shouldn't be that hard for me to just pull out my phone and take a couple clips. So until then, I will see you guys in a bit. saw it coming. I knew it was gonna happen. Friday and I forgot to vlog the entire day again I don't know why I'm so bad this time but it's fine we have a fair amount of vlogging content I'm about 81% of the way through I'm almost done with the book which I'm really surprised about and I realized that I wanted to keep this vlog spoiler free didn't happen as of what has happened right now Grace seems to have a weird power where she can make anyone fall in love with her and I'm sitting here like somewhat called it Andrew, Lisa and I were talking about maybe it was the bracelet, but now it's just Grace. So I'm assuming it's like a weird siren call. Not gonna lie. Jesse somehow has his last breath, which he was willing to give to Lucy if she was drowning. Lucy can contact the dead and have them do their bidding, which may I'm glad that Lucy has an interesting power because since James was the only one, I was sitting here like, well, that's not fair now, is it? Precious little Magnus. Um, I love Matthew's little obsession toward him. It's so cute and so funny, and I find it hilarious that he's like, fawning over Magnus but also I saw a spoiler on Cassie's Twitter though she's like yeah Magnus is gonna get a love interest and I'm like is it Matthew I hope not like I love I think a friendship would benefit them but I don't know about a relationship I can't see that working out very well because I feel like their personalities and aesthetics are pretty similar also I got a new camera um my cam that new camera that I have now the camera that I have currently is not meant for filming 
in the slightest like I love it to tears and I will use it for cam for like actual camera work but in terms of video not at all and this one has a viewfinder and I already started playing with it a little bit last night because I was so busy what else did I do last night last night I ended up going to um, I'm out to dinner with my family my brother got into this program for um, kids with learning disabilities for college and on Monday so we went out yesterday to celebrate I'll have to see what else I remember about the book I'm almost done with it which I'm like thank goodness not because it's a bad book it's a wonderful book and I love Cassie writing historical fiction but I have a lot of things to do next week and tomorrow and the week following so i can't bring a book with me i'm actually bringing my kindle the plot twist with cordelia's dad honestly kind of broke my heart it's really sad and it makes sense that they um did it that way just because consumers con consumption and alcoholism was a big thing back in like the victorian warden stages of the world i also just really love matthew and anna lightwood i would date them and I, I feel bad saying that because they're technically younger than me but if you look at the grand scheme of things they're really older than me by like a couple hundred years well yeah all right well i gotta get going i'll update you guys if i remember anything else about what my thoughts are on the book thus far oh the love triangle there's like a weird love triangle slash not love triangle slash love quartet slash it, it's it's weird and typically i would complain about it because i'm not a huge fan of love triangles such as that but I actually really enjoy it. Um, Cassie Clare has a wonderful way of writing love triangles that I am not opposed to. So I think she is one of the few people that I will co consistently read books from if she puts out love triangles because she writes them really well. So like I said, I'll update you guys when I read some more. I'll try to vlog tonight because I do have to pack, do laundry, do a lot of things. I'll see you in a little bit. I wonder what's behind door number one. <gasps> a cat. What are you doing, hon? I meant to update the vlog last night and then again this morning that never happens and I'm chilling in my hotel room as I am in my business conference business trip I finished the book last night oh it's so good wow my hair is a mess it's fine you guys see it and it's messy state anyway so we're just gonna go with it honestly Cassie Clare just needs to write more more historical fiction I think the infernal devices and now the last hours are gonna be like my top two favorites from her honestly best thing ever i love reading her science fiction i love everything about it i think definitely five out of five stars for me i think she does really well with like the complicated relationships between everyone and the relationships with like, the siblings and honestly she just gets better and better every time she writes and that's honestly where i want to be with as a writer is just to get better and better I really enjoyed it. I think, like I said, she gets better as a writer. She definitely improves in every way, shape, and form. I think that at the end of the day, she's just going to get better and better and better. And I can see that she really enjoys writing historical fiction. Like, I know she enjoys writing present day as well, but like you can just see it in how she writes that she has a really strong passion for like researching and writing historical fiction novels. And I, I just want to see more of that from her. Actually, let's just go on with the good stuff, continue on with the good stuff, and I'll just move things around. 
I really enjoyed the relationship. Uh, there's so many like love triangles in this one, and that's saying something because one of the couples in the Dark Artifice has actually ended in a love triangle, polyamory. But for some reason, she writes love triangles, and even if it ends in one way or the other, I really genuinely enjoy it. I feel like love triangles in general sometimes are hit or miss because if you don't write them well, then they're really bad. But if you do write them well, then you have a bestseller. I think she writes them really well. She does it in a way where even though you know where the protagonist is leaning toward, you can still sense a little bit of apprehension and you know kind of where things are going. It, it throws you in for a bit of a loop and I enjoy that. I really do. I don't think that the love triangles were done in any weird way. I do have to say though that people are shipping Magnus and Matthew together and I'm not a fan. Not because I don't think they'd be a cute couple, but I think their personalities are too similar. I think Matthew idolizes Magnus a little too much for it to ever develop into anything romantic in a equal level. So I really don't like that. I'm also really torn on whether or not I like um, Cordelia and Matthew or Cordelia and James. I'm also just like, you know what? We can have it in another polyamory, amor, a polyamory situation and I'd be okay with that. Like James and Matthew don't have to love each other, but CC can love like, that makes sense. I like all the twists. I think all the twists make it such an interesting book. And typically, given with like this, like how thick the book was, I thought it wasn't gonna be that the twists weren't gonna work out, but they worked out and they left it open for the next few books, which I'm really thankful for. And moving on to kind of the issues that I had, I think that the family trees got a little confusing. I would have liked to have seen a family tree in the back of the book somewhere just because there are a lot of lightwoods. <laughs> there are a lot of lightwoods. It was hard to discern who belonged to who, which family at first and it was kind of annoying having to like google like Christopher Lightwood 10 times over to remember oh yeah he is um, Cecil Cecily and Gabriel's kid and trying to figure out who's related to who and who isn't related to who and I've just mm. I also feel like there were instances where she explained something and then she had to re-explain it again a couple pages later and it was kind of repetitive like I think she did that with Oscar Wilde the dog by the way Matthew being obsessed with Oscar Wilde yeah, I love him. So that was kind of a little bit annoying that there were instances where I felt like the um, information got a little repetitive and I had to like go back and like think about everything again. Yeah, I really don't have any other complaints, I don't think. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So Andre and Lisa and I called it Grace's bracelet does something. Grace also does something, but I don't know what it is. I think it's stronger when you have the bracelet on. But other than that, I think she's like a weird siren thingy. Maybe it's her eyes, I don't. I don't know. She just she, some somehow James was not in, was almost head over heels in love with Cordelia, and now he's head over heels in love with Grace because of the bracelet. Grace made Matthew kiss her, and Grace is trying to get information out of Lucy. So it's just I don't trust the bitch. But other than that, I really really enjoyed it. I think it, it went by super quick. I had a hard time putting it down. I really enjoyed the characters, the storyline, the plot, where everything is going. I like seeing um, callbacks to my favorite characters from the infernal devices and i liked it because it wasn't so much like the um queen of air and darkness where it felt like a lot of the book was just there purely for nostalgia like a lot of the instances with the characters and everything i liked that here we got to see there were bits of nostalgia but it wasn't so heavily tied in the overall in the book that it, it took away from anything else i think that this was a really nice form that cassie did and i really enjoyed it i love the merry thieves they are the sweetest little bunch in the world they are like the, the such a crackhead 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 um bunch and i love that cordelia is like she i like the difference with cordelia in comparison to the other female um, characters that we've had thus far. I think Cordelia as a main protagonist did, really did well. She stood out in the sense that she was very strong-willed and still did things on her own and she stood by but there were instances where you can tell that she's very much still influenced by the culture and the society around her. Society? Society. I like that. I really really like this book. I'm already thinking about our reread and I think Lisa, Andrea, and I are gonna be planning to reread the, like, the entire Shadowhunters universe this year. I don't know how I'm gonna do it because I have like a hundred other read-alongs that I'm performing in, participating in, but I'm gonna do it because I miss my babies. So yeah, that is it for this vlog. Um, I will have my full-fledged Goodreads review up at some point. I'm not gonna be home for a while. By the time you guys see this, I'll be home, but I am not home presently, as you can tell. So 
yeah just hit like subscribe comment all that fun stuff and i will talk to you guys in the comments have you guys read chain of gold what did you think i i genuinely think this is one of cassie's best works yet like genuinely just because she she writes really well and it's moved up from where she was before but until next time i will see you guys in the next video and i'm really sorry that this vlog is going up pretty late can't do much about it but until then, I will see you guys everywhere else, and I hope you guys are having a great week, and I hope that if you guys have read Chain of Gold, that we can all discuss it, and if not, read it. And if you didn't like it, please let me know respectfully. I feel like I have to add that in a lot of these bookish videos, because some of y'all get a little mean. Respectfully, tell me what you didn't like about it, and maybe we can have a discussion. But until then, I'll see y'all next time. Bye.